Hi, welcome back to my channel, and this is a sound off on Chicago Fire and Chicago PD. Okay, so before we get into things, um, can I just say I'm a little nervous about this? I've never done a sound off on anything scripted, so y'all bear with me, okay? But I am a One Chicago fan. I got into Chicago Fire first, because my grandma used to watch. So I used to watch an episode here and there, you know? But then one day, I saw Will Munson, a.k.a. Jay Halstead, and I was like, Will Munson from As The World Turns got fine. He took his glow-up pills, okay? And so, I've been hooked ever since. I've been watching PD and Fire. Sometimes I tune into Med, but I don't really like medical stuff like that, like that, like that. So, but yeah, here we are. I'm a try hard. Okay, so we get this shower scene between Stella and Severide. And I wasn't mad at it because, you know, we were left with the cliffhanger last season of Stella going to go find her man. Well, she got her man back, y'all. Okay, Severide is back. And I'm not mad at it. He looks he looks really good in this shower scene. I'm just saying. Now, the writers on this show, y'all like to play with us because they really made it seem like Mouch died. You know, that was another cliffhanger. We didn't know if Mouch was going to make it on the finale episode last season. It was looking really not too good for him. And so I'm when I say relieved that Mouch is fine and he's back at 51 and we all could just, you know, let out a good big sigh of relief. So Firehouse 51 is called to the scene of a delivery truck explosion under a bridge and of course, I call him Severide Never Scared. He jumps into action. He gets the delivery man out of the truck. Unfortunately, he don't really make it. But they realize that something, something is really not right with this explosion. Like a random delivery truck just exploding under a bridge. So while they were on scene of this explosion, they noticed some purple smoke. And Severide was like, mm-mm, something about this isn't right. You know, he's been doing all these arson OFI cases. And he's just like, yeah, mm-mm, I smell a rat. So back at the firehouse, Severide decides that he wants to investigate these purple explosions because he knows something isn't right. Now, Stella is not pleased about it because every time Severide starts investigating these arson situations. He gets wrapped in it. It's become a vice for him. And she's not pleased because she don't want her man taking off on her like he did last season. So I understand, Stella. Stella, girl, we are here. I got you, girl. I got you. But um, he's really good at it. He, really, he loves doing it. And he's ambitious. And he's a young fire captain on the squad team. You think he's just going to sit there and be like that forever? I don't know if this was some foreshadowing, but it's not looking too good for y'all if you want to stop him from doing what he's good at, girl. This man cannot be tamed. Have you met him? Have you met you? But anyways. So while Severide is investigating his purple smoke explosions, um, the rest of the house, they up to no good. So Ritter, who is normally an engine, has been filling in for Gallo on truck. So Herman and Stella been going back and forth. Stella wants to keep Ritter. Herman wants Ritter back on his team because that's his dude. Like, he's his mentor. And I'm on Herman's side. Stella, I love you, girl. I love you, but you're real manipulative. I don't like how you be playing. I don't like how she be doing things sometimes. She always want to have things her way. And... And not this time, boo. Not this time. So back to this purple smoke. Okay, so Severide has put two and two together. And he realizes that these explosions are intentional. They are after firefighters. They're trying to harm as many firefighters as possible. He relays this information to everyone. And now everybody's walking on eggshells. Everybody looking over their shoulder. Everybody's afraid. Because they're like, how are we risking our lives to save people and put out fires and rescue the people? And someone is targeting us. The nerve of the people. And I'm with you. I'm with you. 
Because why would y'all want to come after the firefighters? Why would you want to come after these heroes? It don't make sense. So several riders out in the field asking questions, trying to figure out, you know, who is behind this purple smoke explosions? Because we don't have time for all of this, okay? We have to save lives, okay? And I think he was at Firehouse 24. I'm not sure. It don't even really matter. But he realizes that 51 is indeed the very next target. So Severide calls 51 and lets Herman know, like, yo, y'all need to go do a clean sweep because 51 is definitely the next target. Herman and the chief go and make sure nothing crazy is around there. And as soon as Herman steps foot, he sees somebody running away. He realizes it's the purple explosion arsonist. And he takes off. He calls him out and he takes off. Baby. This was a good episode. This was a good episode. When I tell y'all I was hollering, when I tell y'all I was screaming, Herman takes the package and Bowden takes the arsonist. He literally, <laughs> he literally ran up on this man on his car. The man was already in the car. Man was already in the car. Bowden was like, oh, no, 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 no. You're not getting away. No way, no way, buddy. Bowden stood on business. He was like, oh, no, you ain't getting away from us. He wrestled that man into the car. I mean, it was good. It was. I was in this house screaming. I was like, get him, get him, get him. <laughs> Y'all know the Kaya meme when she was doing all of this here? That was me. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed Chief Bowden putting them paws on the arsonist because you tried it because why would you try to go blow up house 51 we don't do that around these parts don't play with my people like that and i love all the characters on chicago fire brett i don't too much like brett but we'll talk about her later i've loved the characters on chicago fire i like Bowden especially some about him, he remind me of my daddy. I don't know if it's the mustache or the complexion. I don't know what it is, but I love Chief Bowden. I really do. And when I say he was get, he put them paws on that man. He said, you're not going to get away with this, buddy. Bucko. The buck stops here. I was here for that. I was all here for that. I enjoyed this scene very, very much. <laughs> Anyways, we find out that the purple smoke arsonist is a disgruntled former firefighter. Um, they let him go and he let himself go. He became obsessed. His wife left him and took the kids. And so he mad and he want everybody to pay for his nonsense. But sir, don't nobody have time for this. Anyways, they put him in jail. They said, well, he's in jail for now. Like he should be in jail for good. His, his foolishness cost somebody their life. He need to be under the jail. So now that that is taken care of, we could talk about Brett planning this wedding to Casey. Now, I gotta let y'all know, I'm not a fan of Brett and Casey, Bracey, whatever y'all call them. I'm not a fan of them. Okay, Dawson was my girl. Dawson was my girl, and I understand how she did Casey. She wasn't right for how she left that man. I get it. But I'm never gonna be okay with a woman getting with her best friend's husband or ex-husband or ex I don't like that to me the Brett and Casey ship is forced I just I never got into it I don't like it I don't support it um congratulations to them they're getting married neither of them are going to be on the show I guess so it is what it is at least I don't have to see it so back with Stella Ride, Severide is letting Stella know, like, yo, this OFI thing, this arson investigation thing, this is my thing. I don't think I'm about to give up a good opportunity just because you feeling away. You know, what I did before, that, I, I'm not going to do that no more. I'm going to work on stuff locally and I'm going to do better. But you can't take away something that I'm good at. Like, you can't just tell me I can't do this no more. And I'm with Severide. I'm with Severide. I really feel like Stella don't have no leg to stand on. Because didn't she dip on him the season before? And he just popped back up when she felt like it? 
my good sis, I'm with you when I'm with you, but you can't do this to this kind of man. You don't know who you, who you marry. This man is going to leave you if you keep trying to stifle him. I'm going to need y'all to work this out. I'm going to need y'all to work this out because we went through too much of y'all breaking up, making up, breaking up. We tied. Fix this. Fix this, Derek Haas. Fix this. But I will say I'm glad and I'm proud of my sister Stella for bowing out gracefully and letting Ritter stay with Herman. Because, you know, Herman saved the day. He picked up the bomb. He literally picked up a bomb. He picked up a, a, a box that he knew could explode at any second. He picked it up and he saved the rest of y'all. So, she decides to bow out and say, you know what, Ritter? I think you should go back to Engine. I can't steal you from Herman. And I was proud of you. Because that was the right decision. Because you shouldn't have been trying to take him in the first place. Kudos to you, Stella. You're growing. This is growth. Anyways, the episode concludes with Chief Bowden giving a nice heartfelt speech, you know, to Firehouse 51 and lets them know, you know, whether you stay or you go, you're always going to be a part of this here family. And I love y'all. And it was cute. I really enjoyed Chicago Fire. I really, really, really did. I would give that definitely a 8.5. <laughs> Shout out to Anne Marie over in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. <laughs> okay, so about Chicago PD. Now, I started off watching Fire, but PD has really become my favorite. It really has. It really, really has. Um, Team Berzik over here for me. <laughs> okay, I love Kim is my girl. Kevin is... Kevin is so beautiful and it's so delicious. I love Kevin. Um, I love Ruzik. Jay Halstead is the reason why I even watch any of these shows. Shout out to Jesse. Now, Hank Voigt. Hank Voigt is my guy. Okay. Hank Voigt is my guy. Now, I started watching when the show was already in motion. So... I ain't never hated Void. I feel like if I had watched it from the very, very beginning for the first time, I probably would have hated Void. But anywho, Hank is my guy, okay? I like Hank, okay? Hank, he take care of his people. He do what he gotta do, you know? What they call him, the, the sausage maker. He work in the sausage factory. He do the ugly, crazy stuff that don't nobody wanna do. And it is what it is. So I told y'all I'm Team Berzik, right? Okay, I have been on this roller coaster ride with Kim and Adam since day one. Okay, and um, everything was coming together so beautifully last season. Everything was coming together. Okay, we went through the loss of their baby. We went through their broken engagement. We went through all the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, and it was finally coming together last season. And then. That little boy shot at him. When I tell you, I ain't been, I've never been this more worried about a fictional character in my life. I have been worried, okay? The writing, what was it? The actor's strike, the, the strike. Look, we've been through it all. We've been through a lot. And all I knew was if Adam did not come back, and he did not make a full recovery, I was going to be upset. I was going to be feeling some kind of way because throughout the entire, since that finale episode aired, and they shot my Adam Ruzek. They shot my girl's man. They shot Kim's man. I ain't been okay. I have not been all right. Y'all know y'all was wrong. Y'all know y'all was wrong for making us think that something happened to Adam. The way that Platt was chasing down Hank outside the precinct. Talking about you got to find a replacement. We didn't need that. We did not need that. But anyways, when I see my baby running down the alley in that hoodie, when his face was revealed, it was Adam up on his feet running, you know, training, trying to get back in the game. It did my heart well. It really, really did. Because 
I was not gonna be okay if Adam wasn't okay. I'm just letting y'all know. And then, of course, my boo thing, Kevin was right there with his beautiful self. He's so good looking, oh my God. He just get finer every season. Ugh. This is a beautiful cast. <laughs> Anyways. This episode was a very much Haley focused episode. And if I'm being honest, Haley's never really been my my cup of tea, okay? I don't hate her. Maybe a little bit. Maybe I don't like her a little bit. You know, maybe I don't like her because she had that little fling with Adam Ruzik. And I ain't too much like that because I'm team Berzik. You know. But um, I never really connected with her character. Like, I don't hate her, but I just didn't ever... I don't enjoy her. Even when she married Jay, I was like, oh, okay. But she don't really do it for me. This episode didn't change my mind much. So from what we see with Haley is struggling with Jay leaving her. He just kind of dipped on her. He just left her high and dry. He left her for dead. Like he just left her. And it, I don't really understand what that was about. But um, she's really struggling with it. She missed her man. So Haley is shadowing a crisis prevention team. And of course, like Haley, she always has to do the most. She always has to overstep. She always got to be the right and everyone else is wrong. And she always got to jump before everybody else. And she intervenes in the situation. She misreads the situation. And of course, she makes things worse before she can fix them. Typical Haley. That's why I don't really care for her like that. And I hate to be a Debbie Downer, but just Haley doesn't do it for me. I feel like her stories are always the same. She always jumps the gun and gets herself into some kind of mess. And really, they all do that. They all get themselves in mess. Kevin has done it. My boo Kim has definitely done it. Adam has definitely done it. Hank, Lord have mercy. He didn't cause some problems for everybody. But something about, I don't know, something about Haley. I just have never connected with her character. And it just seems like they're doing the setup for her to leave the show and go be with Jay. And that's fine with me because, like I said, I never connected with her character. But... I'm going to need them to take it easy, though. They keep getting rid of people all the time, and it's like, mm, slow down now, slow down. I will say, though, that I'm happy that this was a episode that kind of shined a light on mental illness and mental health, and it's very important, very important to see, you know, people are living different types of lives out here. People are going through different battles and different struggles, so... I'm glad that they did that, but honestly, I feel like all Haley's episodes are always the same. Like, it's, she's always jumping the gun and messing stuff up, and I'm just not here for it. It looks like Hank is going to help her through, and I mean, I guess he should. He's in charge of these people. He helped put some trauma on this girl with the whole, um, what was that, two seasons ago when... Child, when they shot that man and covered it up. See, that's another reason why I don't really do Haley like that. Like, Haley was so traumatized by shooting that man. All the times you done shot somebody, Haley girl. I'm going to need you to be for real. All the things that you guys have done, that's what bothered you? You shot someone who tried to kill your friend? Those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about when Kim was kidnapped and that guy shot her and then Hank kidnapped the kidnapper and he was trying to beat the, you know, he wanted to know where Kim was. And Haley found out where he was and she convinced Hank that we got to turn him in. We got, you know, we got to turn him into, take him into custody. Hank was like, nah, we ain't taking him into custody. We get what we need from him. We're going to get rid of him. Cause look at his face. I done beat him up. Like I can't present him to the precinct like this. And Haley was like, no, you got to do right. We got to do right. We have to do the right thing. And then he reached for the gun. Haley ain't had no choice but to shoot him. Hank had to get rid of the guy. And now all of a sudden, Haley has such a hard time dealing with what they did. Now, Haley, I don't feel like 
presenting all the things that Haley has done. But girl, if this is what's got you upset, I'm gonna need you to be for real. <laughs> But anyways, like I said before, um, Haley really doesn't do it for me. So this episode wasn't one of my faves. But I was happy to see all those faces. I was happy to see Platt, Void, Kim, Ruzik, Kevin. You know, I was happy to see them. We got to see Jay's face in a picture. But um, I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. I'm glad that, you know, Adam as well. Can't wait to see Michaela and... I'm looking forward to the season. I'm looking forward to finally seeing Adam and Kim be together. Because like I said before, we done been through a lot. They done took us through the water. The valleys, the lows, the... Baby, we went through a lot with Adam and Kim. So I'm ready to see them be together and be happy. And I don't even care if Adam is struggling. Because clearly that's what it's going to be. He's going to be struggling. But they're going to be together. They're going to be together. And I'm happy to see that. Because it's been a long time coming. <laughs> but yeah, that is my Chicago Fire and Chicago PD sound off. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And please give me some feedback because I've never done a scripted series before. But I really love this show. And I was like, I need to just try to change some things up. So y'all let me know how I did. Thanks for watching.